All right, guys, welcome back. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we've got a hotly requested video we're going to be making. We're going to be firing a Swedish Jungmann service rifle with 600 yards. Um, ever since we dropped the initial review uh, on this rifle, we've had a lot of people wanting us to take this from the tower and do some long range shooting. Well, guess what? Today we're going to do it. We've got her dialed up to 600 yards. Um, these guns are so neat, man. I, <laughs> words cannot describe how awesome these rifles are. They really are a lot of fun to shoot. Um, we do have a full review on this service rifle. If you guys want to check out that particular video, we are going to shoot it though. 6.5 by 55 millimeter. This is 139 grain FMJ PPU. It was and, the same uh, ammo we ran in the other video, or did we run some of the sniper ammo? We we ran M41. Okay, M41. Yeah. All right, now this should. Uh. Yeah. Look at that. Toss me those ears in front of you there. Yeah. Thank you, sir. All right. No big deal. 600 yards, open sights. We got crosswind. No big deal. At least right. it's not freezing but cold. It's not freezing cold yet. Good All right. Grief. Oh yeah, this is gonna be fun. All right, we have a camera down range, obviously. We're gonna take some shots. Camera down range is off to the left about 30 feet, so any bullet trajectories might seem off to the viewer. Simple disclaimer. You ready? Yeah. I just had to get that disclaimer out of the way so I don't think we're idiots. Impact on what? The gopher. <laughs> really? <laughs> Well, we do have a we do have a right to left wind. Keep that same point of aim and keep shooting. Come on, P17, let's live again. Come on now. Oh no, that was a little bit low and right or low and uh, low and left. It. From the gopher it was like uh, a foot low and about mm, six inches right. Just uh, low and right of the gopher. That's kind of where they're at right now. Got him. Got the big gong right there in the lower center. Didn't see that one. That was uh, just past the gopher's face, off to the left of the big gong. That was uh, just low and left of the eight inch popper. Uh, down there in the dirt, off at five o'clock at the big gong. All right, I'm gonna try dialing up a little bit more uh, elevation and bullseyeing. It's the only way I'm gonna be able to see what I'm dealing with here. <clears throat> I was hoping it's gonna be like the M17 when we hit the gopher like five times. That was um, off at one o'clock on the right side of the big gong. Got it. All right, I think I know what to do. <laughs> Always takes a few shots to get dialed in. It does. Didn't you say that thing maxes out at 600 yards? Or 600 uh, meters? Yeah. I guess that would be in meters, so we're at 550 meters. Yep. So. Oh no. Watch your thumb there, boy. Now I know what to do. All right. Yeah, maybe, you're right. Maybe dialing with that additional elevation is what we needed. Hopefully we can do this little gun justice. They are so much fun to shoot though. No recoil. That oh, yeah. brake that's on there, and man, just it's a direct gas impingement gun. These things are great. Send it when you're ready. Uh, no clue. Oh, uh, off the left side at seven o'clock. Mm. 
That was an impact of 10 o'clock there on the left side. That was just off the right side at 2 o'clock. That clustered in your other little group of shots over there on the left. Oh, I didn't see the impact there. I'm having a hard time seeing that trace. That was just high. Got it. Got it. Just barely clipped it at two o'clock. It's getting in there. <laughs> All right, I think I know where to hold here. I'm trying. All right, now shoot the gopher. It's a long way. <laughs> Send it when you're ready. Just off at five o'clock on the right. Directly under the plate down the berm. Got it. Didn't see the impact. Hmm, didn't see the impact. Got it. You're favoring on the left side of the plate currently. Good. Good. Got it. You're on it now, favoring just right of center. That one looked like it was off at three o'clock. Have to make a brass catcher for that thing. <laughs> this freaking gun, man. It's doing pretty pretty well I mean I'm not complaining mm -mm. I mean and I'm not exactly shooting slow either you know oh no heck no well it's a sim auto come on man uh, I didn't see it I thought I heard a splat uh, th I could have swore I heard it hit mm, I didn't I didn't hear an impact Just low at five o'clock. That was uh, considerably low at seven o'clock. Don't know, unless it went right over the top. That one uh, landed close to the gopher's head. Got it. Right side at four o'clock. Good. Don't know where that impacted, but you got it. That looked like it was off at five o'clock again. Off at four o'clock. It's all in there. I mean, for full metal jacket ammo. Man. All right. I wish you still had some of that M41 laying around. Yeah, we burned all that stuff up. Man, I know, but all right. does it shoot good? I'm gonna shoot uh, one more mag here, guys. We're gonna let the gun cool down, load up a few more stripper clips. I'm gonna let Chad have a go. Guys, I know we're just having fun here. Man, these things are so fun to shoot. No recoil. We're running reasonably cheap ammo. We're not running the M41 sniper ammo that we had in the first video, but the PPU is not shooting too bad. 
Um, I imagine maybe some 139 grain match ammo would be a merited revisit. Um, as good as this stuff is shooting with ball ammo, I would love to see some match grade ammo. I have a solution for that. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> I mean, the, man, these guns, they just, uh, they shoot really well. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, I know it's hard for people watching, if you've never shot this kind of distance, to understand, like, with iron sights, it's a long way. Like, it's, it's really tough to shoot these old guns consistently. It's like the difference between a dinner plate and a spoon. Yeah. The spoon is the target and the dinner plate is your front sight. You ready? Yeah. I guess I wasn't ready. I didn't see it. All right, go ahead. Got it. Mm, that trace is getting harder and harder to see. Uh, just, it looked like it was just off at seven o'clock, slightly left. Just right at three o'clock. Got it. Just right at four o'clock. Just right at four o'clock, literally like same hole. I couldn't see it. Just low. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Old girl still got it. Dude, I'm telling you, these guns shoot. And here's the thing to consider too. We haven't really tried to make any sort of adjustments to the sights up front. You know, we, we do have some right to left wind that was blowing earlier and we were having to kind of give some, some very deliberate hold left to right. And you know, with iron sights, it can be very difficult to get that hold just like you want it, um, especially at these ranges. However, if we were to just drift those sights a bit and dial this thing in, I have no doubt that every single one of those rounds would hit exactly where we wanted to. It's really tough. I'm having to basically aim like, all right, so here's, here's the, uh, the cut inside of the sight, right, like this, and there's the front sight post. I'm having to put the gong like up here, and I'm having to just sort of like hover and just kind of find that sweet spot, and when he tells me I'm hitting, I just have to kind of go, all right, that's about where I go. I'm, I'm literally estimating where I'm shooting. I'm not <laughs> technically even aiming at anything specific, and the gun is still lobbing them right in there. I mean, if you had a, a gun like this and you put an optic on it or something, mm -hmm. dude, these things would, whew, you don't want to be down there. This thing's got you. I just love how much power that 6.5 still got when that it six gets down That 6.5 is getting down there and hitting that gong. All right, so I'm, I'm going to swap out with Chad. He's going to shoot it. Oh, yeah. All right, let's see if I can not lose a thumb today. Let's see, rock in. It's been a minute since I shot this gun. That thing makes M1 Grand Thumb look like a uh, cakewalk. <laughs> we still never stuck a hot dog in one of these or the Hakeem. I wanted to stick a hot dog in the Hakeem and close it and see what happened. Maybe put a toothpick down the middle of it to simulate a bone or something, yeah. Ooh, all right. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it's scary. <laughs> it's sketchy. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to go for it. Good grief. Definitely got the sights on max elevation. Good. It's like a tiny white speck out there. Good grief. <laughs> I'm All right. I'm just going to like kind of bullseye it, kind of bullseye it, and see what happens. Ah, screw this. <laughs> I, I can't get down that low. All right, you ready? Yeah. Impact uh, high and left are on the edge of the gong. <laughs> so it is hitting to the left for you a bit. All right. Oh, the wind died down too. Now that was high and right, slightly off the edge of the gong. Right. Don't compensate as much. Yeah. In other words. Uh, good, center impact. Uh, 
Um, I think you hit just over the top of the gong. Uh, just high and left. You're barely off the edge of the gong. Impact. Uh, just high. Just high. Impact. Uh, just high. Dang. Do well, you want the sight set lower? Nah. Okay. I don't uh, think we'll see. like 12 inch, 14 inch group. I we'll mean, for see. irons at 600, it's not bad. Well, Your not. misses are literally just right off the edge of the plate. I mean, you're, you're not missing by much. <clears throat> Let's see. I mean, I'm bullseyeing kind of down in the dirt, you know. So let's see, that is, that's max. Uh -uh. That try is, that. Yeah. That's the 600 yard setting. Yeah, Do you that's want, max. Do you want less that's elevation? Six. Yeah. Let's try the six. Yeah, flip the safety back over, otherwise <laughs> lose a thumb. Yeah, you have to engage a safety. Get in there. Oh, the brass is like going right over the edge here for the most part. There were there were a few shots that were going like way up there. Okay. Leave that clip in and humor me. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, let's see. There you go. Whoop! I don't know if that's how it's designed, but I'm going to say it is. Well, it works. I like holding a military surplus rifle in my hands. I love the sling on that gun, too. You were mentioning that earlier. Yeah, I was, I was commenting to Eric that I've got like four slings in my cart on Liberty Tree Collectors. I haven't ordered them yet. One of them is one of these Swedish, uh, they call them a Swedish marksman sling for like the 96s or the, the Jungmans. But I was gonna give me one for my 96. I have to say that's probably one of my favorite guns. It's pretty awesome. Anything Swedish. I think that and the PSL are two I probably could never get rid of. Yeah. All right, so if this goes like all wonky jaw, I'm just gonna go back up to the max elevation. Yeah, that's okay. Where I was. All right. Send it. Okay, yeah, you need more elevation. Bye. Here, I got okay. it. I got it. Yep. Yeah, that's there it. you go. Okay. Bleep. Yeah, I it's like the, a weird in-between setting. Yeah, I love the dial on this thing. It's just the elevation dial, literally. Just turn it and there you go, easy peasy. Yep. <clears throat> all right. Good windage on that though. Uh, just low and left. Just low, right under it. Just under it now? What yeah. in the world? Uh, just to the left. You're missing off the left edge of the gong a little yeah. bit. Remember how I said I was having a hold of the right a smidge? Yeah. Uh, just high. Ah. Good, uh, good windage. Impact. Uh, just low. Impact. 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 Uh, those four shots triangulated into uh, probably about a dinner plate. Dude. You can't ask for better than that. And I, I don't guess, well, four shots don't triangulate. Triangulate is three. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Your, your last four shots are about the, the rough circumference of a dinner plate. We're just a bunch of dumb rednecks. Oh, yeah, here we go. Let's see. I forgot. Boop. I love it. I like watching it fly out of the top. This All right, now you did get, you got awesome. some wind picking up. That's okay. Six five don't care about no wind. <laughs> I mean, the gun is shooting exceptionally well. Impact. Impact, you're on the lower uh, bottom quadrant of the gong down there in the right-hand quadrant. Uh, just off the right edge of the plate. Yeah, I kind of feel like That I wind was is kind of up and down a little bit. Kind of felt like I was holding too far to the right. Uh, that was two feet over the top of the gong. Weird. Yeah. Same point of aim. Hmm. 
Poor performing underpowered ammunition PPU. Oh, come on. <laughs> Impact, I think. Uh, I didn't hear it. Yeah, I think he might have hit the strap. Maybe, okay. Because I didn't hear the plate ring, but it moved. Uh, yeah, that was high uh, up above, about a foot above the gong. Okay. Impact. Uh, low and left, about two inches off the gong. Ah. Impact. Dude, man. I mean, how much better does it need yes. to be? Other than having maybe an optic. You put an optic on this gun, I'm gonna murder you. Oh no, I'm not. No, <laughs> I'm not. Just speaking theoretically? I don't, you know, I don't know if they had military uh, versions of these with optics on them or not, but I'm looking for one. <laughs> man, oh man, oh man. Dude, oh. what, what more does a service rifle need to be able to do? That thing pits the ace. God. You guys have no idea how small that gong is with these sights. I mean, maybe you do have an idea. We talked about it before, but... That, it that is... gun is a heck of a lot more accurate than people give them credit for. Yeah, it's just going to drive the price up another few hundred dollars. That's right. I'll never be able to afford one unless I sell off half my collection. Uh, I couldn't really see that one. Might have. A lot of these ones where I'm having a hard time seeing, they might have went just barely over the top of the gong. Yeah, they go right on top like right behind it. Uh, just off the right edge. Okay. I mean, you're right in there. All your misses are only like an inch off the gong. Impact. You're on the lower quadrant of the gong. Okay. Lower left. Impact. Those two shots. Okay. Yeah, so look. Those last five shots probably shot into a group roughly about maybe 10 inches, 10 or 12 inches. And I'm just wrapping these dang rounds out of here. Yeah. I mean, I had a few strings that were decent. Dude. You're getting some good strings with it. I mean, the gun shoots exceptionally well. Swedish manufacturing, an awesome, awesome round. And, I mean, well look, here. here's the God. thing too, like people can say what they want about PPU ammo, but I mean, this stuff, it's available, it's reasonably priced, it works, who cares? Man. I mean, you can keep all the brass and reload it. Pretty cool, man. It's just such a good cartridge. I it mean, is. Why, I mean, why do you think, like, why do you think 6.5 is so popular? Like, 6.5 Creedmoor, you know, and all that, like, 6 millimeter stuff. Man. I mean, dude. All right, you got five, right, five more five rounds. Five rounds left. <clears throat> All right, I got five rounds. All right, I'm gonna hit that eight inch popper. Do it, man. That gun will do it. I mean, I can barely, I see a speck. It's like a little <laughs> pinprick of white on the berm down there. All right, let's see. And the wind just picked up. Thank oh, you very it picked much. up way much. Didn't see it. You're either like right there at it, or you're or you're somewhere way like off. Like way off. <laughs> you can hit it. I can't tell. Dang, damn it! I'm not gonna end on a high note today, on Gus. <laughs> see, I'm gonna shoot the big gong. Let me get two more hits. I try to. Nope. 
on it. Man, that wind. <laughs> like literally, like, let me take a shot at the eight inch popper. <laughs> like, no, 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 you're not doing that today. What an awesome gun. Oh, I wish I would have bought one of these when they were still cheap. <laughs> They're so expensive now. Thank you very much. Uh-huh. God, you're welcome. All right, so we, we alluded to uh, some match ammunition. So Eric's been a little hesitant to try out my little wooden bullet loads, but I've got, I bumped up the charge a little bit and those things shoot really good out of the M96. And like out of 500 rounds, I've made like 500 rounds of that stuff. I had one primer not detonate. I mean, whatever. Uh, but we'll, it we'll try good. it out in that if you want. Yeah, we'll come out here. We'll get the the Jungman and we'll get the M96 up here. We'll bring some of those uh, wooden bullets. Basically, if you don't know, I'm taking the M14 blanks. It's a red wooden bullet on just a brass case, uh, Burdan primed. I'm pulling the projectile, dumping the powder, putting. Uh, I think I was loading it with Varget and 140 grain Sierra Match King, just a 6.5 Match King. Um, and they shoot really well and it's cheap as all get out. It's like 45 cents a shot, you know, for match ammunition. So um, I just can't say enough good things about these rifles. I mean, what more fun can you have? I mean, sitting from a tower 611 yards away with iron sights, just factory ammunition, nothing special, and ringing that 22 inch plate that much. There's nothing better than that. I know. Can you tell? It, it, it is the mecca oh. we all, we all yearn to achieve, to these, reach. These rifles, they really do. I mean, just mill search in general, they just melt my heart. They really do, man. Especially ones like this that are just so accurate. But hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, <laughs> it's just hard to compete with these things. But we got a ton more military surplus stuff coming down the pipeline. More videos from the tower. Um, some where we might not hit as much, but par for the course. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, we'll talk to you next time. See you soon.